Hi there, my name is Omar M. Khatib. I'm the director of growth here at Petrero Medical. And uh, if you're watching this video, it's likely because you got connected with me and wanted to learn more about our technology, or perhaps you saw a video and information about our company. So in this short presentation, um, I'm gonna answer all your questions, not only about our company and technology and how it can help your hospital, but more specifically, the big problem that all, a lot of hospitals are facing when it comes to acute kidney injury. Uh, and more specifically, what does that mean in terms of patient length of stay? What does that mean for uh, the costs and how much money a hospital is losing every year. So whether you're a clinician or a hospital administrator, perhaps a director of an ICU or OR, um, you're going to get a really great understanding, not only of our technology, but again, the problem that we solve and how it has an effect on your hospital and patients. So let me uh, shrink my video screen here and we'll get started. So this is our company, uh, Petrero Medical. We're based here in Silicon Valley, specifically in Hayward, across from uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, the, across the bridge that is. And our company uh, is very much like your hospital. You know, we, we're full of people who are on a mission uh, and very passionate about patient care and developing a better standard for those people. We uh, consider ourselves a predictive health company and, as a, and we're a medical device company more specifically. And we focus on two main problems, acute kidney injury and abdominal compartment syndrome. And we use both hardware and software to solve that. Uh, so real quick, this is a medium-sized hospital here in the U.S., and this collection period is from, is from 2016 to 2018. Uh, this data is pulled from uh, government websites and pulling from Medicare and Medicaid. And I'm going to come back to these numbers uh, shortly, but just for reference, this medium-sized hospital uh, from 2016 to 2018 indicated that 3,276 patients right, ended up with post-operative acute kidney injury. That means that these patients did not have AKI beforehand, but they ended up with AKI post-op, right? So their rate is actually pretty good, 0.89%. It's below the national average. What's going to shock you in a moment is how bad these numbers actually are and how you shouldn't actually be happy if you're just a little bit below the national average, which, by the way, uh, eight out of 10 times from the hospitals that I evaluate, they're all right at the national average, if not a little bit above it. And then their CAUTI rates here, the lower the, lower the score, the better, uh, is 0.775. The state score is 0.851. So not bad on the CAUTI rates. We'll be getting back to this in a moment. Now, I want to give you a little bit about me. Um, so I'm a first-generation American, born in El Paso, Texas. My father is a surgeon from Iraq. My mother is a professor in biology. And I went to University of Texas at El Paso. I, I got a degree in uh, biology and chemistry. And I actually went on to medical school. And fortunately, on a full scholarship, uh, because about halfway through medical school, I realized that my passion really was in technology. And so I left medical school and jumped right into medical devices. I built my career in surgical robotics. And so I really have an eye and more, more importantly, an attraction to cutting edge companies that are really going to make a difference, that are going to change the status quo. This is a picture of me and my first robot. Uh, that's the first robotic spine platform. Back then there was only one. Now there's about eight or nine uh, different companies doing robotics and spine. So very proud of that. And again, that's kind of what, what brought me to Petrero because of what they're doing. Now, let me tell you a quick story. When I was a kid, I used to actually go and watch my dad do general surgery back in the 90s when you were allowed to do that. And I remember seeing him put his hand in the patient's incisions like this. So this was the advent of open surgery. But then there's a surgical revolution. And we went from open surgery to minimally invasive surgery to eventually robotic and single port robotic surgery. And Petrero is leading the way in what I like to consider the critical care revolution. We have these outdated fluid systems on the left, and we are trying to automate them, those systems, close the loops, so that way we don't have issues with data. And because we have a Foley catheter in the patient, we add a sensor to the tip, and from that sensor, we collect data continuously and accurately. And our data science team is currently developing uh, predictive algorithms potentially to help hospitals like yourselves look at your patient populations so your clinician can predict and prevent these critical illnesses from happening. Now, Steve Jobs, this is a famous saying here in Silicon Valley, uh, Alan Kay said, and Steve Jobs used it when he released the first iPhone. He said that people who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. And at Petrero, we are very serious about software and hardware. So this is our hardware. To the left, you see the Accurin monitoring system, which is what I'll be going into details in a second. Of course, our Accutab. Accutab is a device developed in the middle of COVID-19. Our hospitals needed a way to monitor patients remotely without entering the room. We came up with this tablet. Uh, 
our, our accurate system does connect to the EMR. I'm sure many of you are wondering that it is EMR compatible. And this is our smart sensing Foley. We can measure inner abdominal pressure, urine output, and core body temperature. Now, for many hospitals, making the big change over to a new disposable, I, it's, it's a big deal, right? And so we try to make it as, as easy as possible. So our company actually developed what's called SmartCath. Simply put, it's just an adapter or universal key so that you can purchase our Acuron monitors first, use this, uh, use SmartCath, and whatever catheter you have, whatever Foley it is, BARD, Medline, anything, you can take a standard Foley, connect it to our system, and thus you make it smart. The only thing that's not, uh, you're not able to do is the inner abdominal pressure because that requires a sensor, but the automation of urine output, the core body temperature, and having it connect to the EMR, that you can do. Now, I don't have to tell you, but for those who are in administration, just as a reminder, the ICU is a very chaotic and complicated environment. And of course, if you go into the OR, like cardiac surgery, it's also chaotic and complex. It's very much like this. There's tubes and stuff everywhere. And one of the uh, results of that chaos is this, acute kidney injury. On average, every year, just in the United States, 300,000 people die from acute kidney injury. And just to put that in perspective, you know, we know very much about breast cancer. Breast cancer every year, it's about 40 to 60,000 people who die right? Why haven't we heard about acute kidney injury? The reason why is that you don't talk about something that you can't do anything about, right? But I'm going to show you how you can potentially do something about that today. Now with the kidney, again, for my non-clinical folks, the kidney is an important uh, organ. And if we've forgotten those who are clinical, you know, it gets oxygenated blood to it and returns oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So it has an effect on all these other organs. Just when AKI happens, come back and take a snapshot of the screen. Look at all the things it affects just from acute kidney injury. You have issues with the heart, the brain, the lungs. In COVID-19, we're having a huge issues with, with fluid in the lungs, right? Where does that all start? It starts from the kidney because of the issues with fluid management. Now, each acute kidney injury, on average, on average, ends up giving you 3.5 extra length of stay in the hospital. And those patients who end up with acute kidney injury, they're two to three times more likely to be readmitted than those who do not. And this is a, a slide from Dr. Michael Hung. He's a, an advisor for us. He's a, a well-known nephrologist up in University of Michigan. And he did this big study on acute kidney injury. And he shows that even with stage one acute kidney injury, again, look at this, 10, 104,000 hospitalizations, even with stage one, it nearly doubles your mortality rate. And the big issue is a lot of patients will get stage one acute kidney injury and then they come out of it. They leave the hospital. Later on in life, their mortality rate doubled and they end up dying from something else, usually cardiovascular related. So this is a huge issue, not only in our country, but you know, all over the world. Now, it, with COVID-19, acute kidney injury has gotten worse. 30 to 37% of COVID-19 patients end up with acute kidney injury. I've seen even reports saying 80%. Um, Dr. Oz has covered the US News. So AKI is a big issue. And, and the public is very aware of it now because it's a very scary thing because they're seeing their loved ones get affected from this just from COVID, right? Now, let's go back to that hospital I showed you guys earlier. So that hospital, you know, again, it's a medium-sized hospital here in the United States from 2016 to 2018, two years, only two years, 3,276 patients had post-op AKI. Now, let's just pretend that by a miracle, half of them, let's just say, came out of stage one AKI and like, and again, we have a miracle drug they're cured. They never had stage one AKI. So let's just say that it was 1,628. And let's say another miracle happened. And uh, of those patients, half of them ended up staying just one day extra, not 3.5, not 2.8. There's a lot of numbers that are usually thrown around from the literature. Let's just say one day. So we end up with 814 post-op AKI patients. Well, in reality, on the very, very low end, keep in mind with a few miracles happening over a period of two years, there were 814 extra days spent in the hospital right? And on the high end, which pretty much is the average, and it's probably worse, 2,849 extra days spent in the hospital, assuming 3.5 days. So let's just go with 814. Again, that's a medium-sized hospital going all the way down. Just from 814 extra days spent in the hospital, and, and, and more often than not in the ICU, that's about $6.1 million spend managing these patients. It's a huge strain on your healthcare system and your hospital revenue. And of course, a huge strain on these patients because they're coming in with one issue and then ending up with more because of what's happening in the hospital. And not to anybody's fault, it's because you don't have the right tools to solve this. So why is this happening? 
Well, if we look at the kidney injury, and if you talk to a clinician, what they use these days is one of two things. Urine output is one of them, but more often, because urine output is tough to measure, they use creatinine because that comes in the blood panel. If you see here where it says GFR, glomerular filtration rate, that's when the GFR goes down and then you see a spike in creatinine. The problem with that is that by the time you see an increase in creatinine, the damage is already done. You can't do anything. And oftentimes, and this is taken from the critical care nephrology textbook, if you see this, uh, this blue line, that's the serum creatinine. And as you see from left to right, that's the functioning nephron mass, those little tubules in the kidney. You have to lose 50% of your kidney function before you start seeing a real rise in creatinine. So think about that. When you see a rise in creatinine, half the nephrons are no longer functioning, right? So you're finding out after the fact. So it's no wonder you end up with all these comorbidities and it becomes a huge issue for the hospital. It does not have to be this way. And again, just to show you why creatinine is such an unreliable marker, look at these three patients, 20, a young 22-year-old black man, 58-year-old white man, 80-year-old white woman. They all have the same serum creatinine, but let's look at the kidney function, right? Very different kidney functions. We need to have better tools and technologies to understand our patients. That's the only way we can make better decisions. So, and it's no wonder, if you look at the ICU today, this is the state. If you look on the left, what's going into the patients, the fluids going in, very accurate and reliable, but not so much because if we look to the right, under the bed, very unreliable, excuse me, very unreliable, very inaccurate, and this misinforms what's going into the patient because your urine output is very archaic. Now, the left out vital sign is urine output. All their vital signs have been automated. Pulse oximetry, respiratory rate. Imagine if I told you that respiratory rate's not uh, automated and you have to go in and palpate and check somehow every hour. It would be ridiculous. That's where we are with kidney. And this is what we expect your nurses to do every hour if they even have time to do it, right? And let's close in on that. They have to walk in, open the urine bag, they have to drain out the urine, eyeball it, write it down, and then leave without, you know, and try not to disturb the patient and try to be accurate. What often ends up happening is that you can't do this every hour because you're strained on, on human resources. So people have to average it sometimes on the handoffs that the data is inaccurate. So imagine getting inaccurate data. How is that going to misinform your clinical decisions? How, how many things are you going to miss because of this? All the literature, all of it is showing intensive urine output monitoring equals better AKI detection and improved outcomes. Nephrologists have been publishing studies like this for years now, and this is just a screenshot of some of those studies. I mean, there's, there's a lot. I couldn't fit them all on here because you wouldn't believe me. The text would be so small. But so much showing intensive urine output monitoring helps. So let's just say your hospital guts a lot, has a lot of money and says, hey, we're going to give, we're going to assign one nurse. All they're going to do is urine output measurements. Well, three problems with that. The first thing is that with your regular standard Foley, you end up with an airlock. And as you can see here, the urine goes down into the tube and ends up getting stuck. So a nurse has to come in and lift that tube just to move it. That's problem number one, not very accurate. The th second thing is called false oliguria or essentially false non-urine production, right? You think that there's no urine being produced, but in reality, the, the mucosa of the bladder is getting sucked in to the eyelid of the catheter, which causes hemorrhagic pseudopops, and the urine gets stuck there. So you might think they're not producing urine, and you perhaps administer Lasix or fluid bolus, when in fact, it's just stuck. And the last part, this is where those cauti rates can get greatly influenced. When your nurse comes in to lift up the tube, look what happens, and this is with a Criticor device. The urine flows back up, and if they don't, if it's a new nurse and they don't pinch the tube, on sterile urine goes back in the bladder, and that's how you end up with these infection rates. So you can see how these issues compound on each other, and they make a, make a huge, huge problem for your hospital, right? This is where Petrero Accurant comes in to solve these problems. Um, the way you can think about it is vital signs from the bladder and kidney that are accurate, continuous, and remote now, and we connect to the EMR. We make, we make your life easier, okay? Now, the way our device works is that it has a thing called active drain line clearance, where essentially there is a venting technology within the system that pushes the fluid using air. So it's automated. Your nurse will never have to pick up the, the, the uh, Foley again, and you're going to have continuous and accurate urine output. And the way this works is that this is our, our Foley in, in, in the bag. We have different lumens in the Foley. And again, whether it's our, our Foley disposable or if you decide to take uh, – 
whatever standard fuel you have and connect it to our system. It uses the same venting technology to, to move air and automate the system. We're the only company in the world to figure this out the way we have. And of course, this is just a cross section to show you what that looks like. Okay, now this disposable, let's say you're doing transport, you can you can unhook the, the, the uh, disposable from the monitor itself and just use it just right, like a regular gravity foley if you decide to do it. Now, better data will give you better outcomes. Now, to your left, this is your standard foley. Again, think about milking the catheter, lifting up. You're seeing that huge airlock surge. To the right is Petrero Acuron. Nice, smooth, even data because it's continuous and automated. Uh, this is an example of one of our hospitals, Grady Health, down in Atlanta. Uh, Barbara McLean was using uh, AccuTab, which is the tablet that goes outside of the room. AccuTab was asked for because for COVID-19 patients, people wanted to limit the amount of time to go in the room. So they wanted the data outside of the room. Now, they kept the data outside of the room, and one of their patients, their COVID-19 patients, had this on the, on the screen. If you see that dotted line, that's a uh, line by uh, a KDGO guideline line, pretty much saying if you're under that line, you end up with a stage stage of kidney injury. They saw, as you see here in that yellow line, when that yellow line's bouncing around underneath the dotted line, that says a patient's in stage one AKI. Well, guess what? Barbara and her team intervened on time. They went through a protocol very quickly, and look at this. They got the patient out of stage one AKI, right? They essentially saved this patient's life because of the decisions they made. Our monitor, our technology did not save the patient. It was the team because they had the right information to intervene on time and act appropriately. Now, one thing I will say again, uh, CAUTI is, is something that's talked about. This, you know, There's been various studies showing that if you use one-way valves, it's part of an overall uh, CAUTI strategy. Now think about when you do transport, right? You're transporting a patient from one place to another. If you take the bag and put it on their, on their bed, as you can see here, those pink circles, we have one-way valves built in, so that way there's no backflow. Right. Think about it when the when your standard foley is being moved around, even in the OR, there there might be some backflow in there because you don't have one way valves. Our system has one way valves, so we can help you have a better overall CAUTI strategy. One last thing I do want to mention. I know it's it's amazing for what it does on your output, but here's the abdominal compartment syndrome uh, area, especially if you're a hospital that does trauma. Um, to the left, this is how uh, abdominal uh, pressure is taken today in some hospitals. You have eight steps there where the nurse pretty much sets up a science experiment and you break a disposable kit, you measure this only one time. So imagine for a trauma hospital, how many times they have to do this throughout the day to measure IAP and how much money that costs. Versus with Acurin, as you'll see here, a sensor is uh, uh, activated and you get the IAP reading within a few minutes. All the nurse has to do is come by and press a button again Sensor is activated and you see that beautiful uh, IAP reading. It's literally like magic. You can do this as many times as you want and you do not, you do not have to open another kit for this, right? Once it's the Foley's in, you can get the data. Now, one thing I do want to mention as a, as a company, we're very uh, digital forward, very savvy. So we have a variety of ways where we train teams virtually and we have digital uh, assets online to help guide your team. We do not charge uh, for training at the moment, right? I'm sure we might be doing that in the future, but for now we do not do this. We have a variety of ways to do live virtual trainings. This is our VP of R&D, and we have a variety of, of, of programs online so that if a new nurse comes in, they can log online and within a few minutes understand how to use the system. So our mission is simple. We're trying to help hospitals like you leave the past so you're not eyeballing your output measurements, you're not manipulating the Foley, and you have a better chance of managing acute kidney injury, hopefully to see the trends and intervene on time and enter the future where these processes are automated and your clinical team has the right tools and technology to better care for your patients. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation. Uh, if I have not answered any questions that you might have, please shoot me a message and let me know. I really look forward to working with you all soon. Take care and stay safe.